Hi, it's been a while since the last video. I've had a lot going on, but I want to do more tutorials this year. Uh, so to start off, we're going to do something kind of simple, but something that I see a lot of people get wrong or kind of overlook. And that has to do with glass shaders, uh, in particular dispersion. So right off the bat, I'll just show you how most people do dispersion and why I'm not a huge fan of it. They tend to take three glass shaders and change the colors to be red, green, and blue. And then when you add these three shaders together, it looks like it's totally uncolored, except for maybe some like rainbowy noise. But now if you lower the IOR of the red and raise the IOR of the blue, you get this sort of colorful, fringy, chromatic aberration effect. And while it looks kind of pretty, uh, I think it kind of sucks. <laughs> you see, dispersion is a thing that happens in real life. It's why prisms split white light into a rainbow. It's why rainbows exist at all, in fact. It's dispersion with raindrops. But why does dispersion happen? See, different wavelengths of light interact with refractive mediums in different ways. So higher frequency light, like blue light, will also naturally have a higher index of refraction. Lower frequency light, like red light, will have a lower index of refraction. And that causes different colors to kind of refract through a medium in different ways. Now if you look closely at this kind of dispersion, you'll see that we get this sort of triple image effect where anything that's being refracted we see three copies of, one of them being red, one of them being green, and one of them being blue. But in real life we have a continuous spectrum of colors, not just three primary colors. So let's get rid of this for now. I'll just throw it off to the side and we'll use it to compare later. And we'll add a new glass material. Since this is based on wavelengths, I'm going to add the wavelength node. And what this does is you give it a wavelength in nanometers and it outputs a color. So 500 nanometers is this kind of like forest green. And as we change the nanometers, we get different colors. We can actually output this as a rainbow. I'm going to use the texture coordinate nodes window output here. And if we plug this into wavelength, we're going to see nothing. And that's because this is accepting measurements in nanometers. And 0 to 1 nanometers is well outside the range of visible light. That means we need to remap this. And we can do this with the map range node. Where x is 0, we want this to be, say, 350. And where x is 1, we want this to be, I don't know, like uh, 750. And with that, you can see the rainbow. You, you've got your violets over here at this range. You've got greens and yellows and reds and whatever, right? Let's replace this window coordinate with a value node. And I'm just going to call it wavelength uh, 0 to 1 because we're sort of only accepting values between 0 and 1 right here. I'm going to add another value node for our IOR and a third one for the amount of dispersion that we want. I'm going to set our IOR to 1.5 and our dispersion to, say, 0.1. When this is 0, we want to add to our IOR, and when it's 1, we want to subtract from our IOR. So let's plug in another map range. Where it's 0, we want it to be 1, and where it's 1, we want it to be negative 1. We're going to multiply this by our dispersion amount right here. So now it's going between negative 0.1 and 0.1. And we want to add this on top of our IOR, which we can do by changing this to multiply add. If we now plug this into our glass material as the IOR, you can see that as our value now goes between 0 and 1, our refractive index is changing a bit. And if we plug this in as a color, you can see that the color changes as well. So now our colors and the IOR is changing. And interestingly, we have an entire continuous spectrum. We're going to add in a white noise texture here, make sure that it has some coordinates being plugged into it, and then just plug the value in place of our wavelength right here. Right off the bat, you'll notice this sort of like darkens and tints our material, but you'll also see these sort of colorful fringes start to appear. What our white noise texture is outputting is a random value between 0 and 1 that is different for every pixel on our screen, and it also changes across multiple samples, which is why if we output it, it sort of starts to accumulate to this sort of just flat grayish color. But if we look at the output for our wavelength node, after it's sort of being filtered through all these random potential wavelengths, it's this weird dark reddish, brownish, grayish kind of color. Now we can actually cancel out this sort of tinting that we've got here. Disable any like tone mapping and looks that you've got going on. It can also help if you add a blur with the viewport compositor. But now we just want to add a color node like this, and we want to color pick this like grayish value that we see here. Now that we know what this kind of average color of all of our wavelengths is, we can re-enable our tone mapping and typical viewport compositing or whatever you want. And we want to take this color and divide it by this color we've just color picked. Because all of our random wavelengths kind of average out to this color, and anything divided by itself is 1, 
if we divide our random wavelengths by this average, then it sort of normalizes them where the new average that they'll be is one, or in our case, that's the color white. And this is exactly what we want. If we now plug this into our glass shader here, that tinting is gone and you can now see our really beautiful dispersion. Now, something that I really like about this dispersion is that we get full on rainbows. We even see purple sort of at the tail ends of the rainbows here because of how we're using the wavelength node. If we bring back our old method just for a sec to compare, it's like a night and day difference. With this method, you see these discrete red, green, and blue images. And with the new method, you get these rainbow streaks. And this is much more accurate to how dispersion works in real life. Though we aren't actually using any like math or figuring out what the exact IOR should be for exact wavelengths. If you want to try that, I'll leave it as an exercise to the viewer, but I've opted for more artistic control here. It's not without its issues though, there's actually one glaring issue that we still need to fix. If we set our dispersion to zero, you're going to notice something a little weird. There seems to still be some kind of orangish tinting going on. Especially if you compare this to a glass material without this color being plugged into it. Weirdly enough though, that tinting isn't happening everywhere, just in a few places. To debug this more easily, I'm going to set our background color to white. I'm going to replace our glass BSDF with a refraction BSDF. This gets rid of the reflections and it makes sure we're just looking at these like pure colors that we want to be looking at. And last, I'm going to set the IOR to 1. And this gives us a much better view of what's going on here. There are two issues to note. One of them, and the more obvious one, is that we're getting this sort of like weird orangish, brownish tinting going on. That seems to stack up for every time a ray is sort of refracts through a surface. So where we have multiple surfaces layered on top, it gets more intense. The other one is that our refraction seems to have this weirdly, slightly yellowish tint, even though we should be canceling this out. Sure enough, if you look at the color that we're plugging into it, it doesn't have that yellowish tint. I'm going to be so real, I tried solving this in a couple different ways, and uh, it all ended up getting really complicated or really mathematically rigorous. So for this video, I'm actually going to show you the workaround that I ended up using that I think just is a lot cleaner for most use cases. Let's not worry about the yellow tint right now, and first just focus on solving the brownish tinting that we've got going on here. If we're able to maybe recognize where this is happening and mask it out, maybe we can fall back to just a normal white color. So I'm going to add a mix node set to color. I'm going to set the bottom color to white. And luckily the light path node has this transmission depth output. This tells us how many times a ray has like refracted through a surface. If we just check where the refraction depth is greater than one, this perfectly masks out those areas. Before we have all this brownish tinting, and with this fallback we don't have that anymore, but we maintain the sort of random noise color that we had before. Now this yellowish tinting is a bit of a weird issue because as soon as I lower the background strength a little bit just to be below one, you'll notice that the tinting totally fixes itself. It's perfectly colored the same as the background. You can even see on these metal things right here that it looks totally transparent. And I think this is probably just some weirdness with Blender multiplying a lot of random wavelength colors that are maybe really dark or really bright and above one and then trying to average all of them out. Really, the greater issue with this is that our cool little wavelength trick doesn't follow conservation of energy. It's not a super clean workaround to making this work without that tinting unless you're working in like a spectral path tracer, where colors are handled in a sort of spectral color space instead of RGB. And I've actually been making a spectral path tracer and I plan on doing a whole video about that and explaining how it works in the future. But for now, this is a trade-off that we more or less kind of just need to accept. And in my opinion, I think it's barely visible most of the time. Anyway, if we get our old skybox back and then crank our dispersion up so we can see it like this, that slight bit of yellow tinting is kind of a non-issue. Now, there is one more issue we need to fix. If we go ahead and replace this refraction BSDF with our glass again, and let's turn off the dispersion, for some reason that coloration is back. We know that it's not from any refractions because we fixed that already with this transmission depth. And it doesn't manifest at all when we're just using the refraction. So this must be due to like internal reflections with the glass shader. What you can do is just go to the same fallback here if it happens to be a glossy ray as well. And this gets rid of the tinting for the internal reflections. But we still get our nice full spectrum dispersion here. If we now compare a glass shader to a perfectly default glass shader, you can see that there's no real odd coloration, and we have our awesome dispersion. If you want to tint the glass, you can use a color multiply node after this node here. 
One thing I'll mention though is that multi scatter GGX specifically will tint this very green if we crank the roughness up to one. And it also looks just kind of yellowish when it's up high anyway. Most of the time this doesn't cause issues, like if your roughness is at 50%, you know, or even higher than that. But if you really need your roughness this high for whatever reason, and it is causing issues, then you can swap over to GGX or Beckman or something and that tinting goes away. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you ever want to see some more resources and art, not just from me, but from other people, I've got a Discord server and it's full of a bunch of incredible artists. And uh, thank you so much for watching.